Hey Internet, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of the John Graham Show. Let me tell everybody that Cerberus this week actually kind of puts a few things into perspective, especially with the character that is Hero, which is that the biggest revelation of all is that he's not a swordsman. He's actually just a magic user. Or at least he's or at least like he has the qualities of being a mage. Even though when the episode even even though in the first episode when when, when we first saw him draw his sword, he actually seemed pretty cap cap capable with the blade. Now it's like, well, they they just said, hey, after after ten years of training, he has no talent whatsoever. He might as well just be a magician because that's where his actual talents lie. Because his father was a really good uh, magician, and also not only is a good uh, is he a good magician, but honestly, because his father switched his heart with Dagon Zotz, both of their powers kind of kind of balance each other out. Because because one isn't greater than uh, the, the other, unless they both have have enough power to kill one another. But still, with that though, it's like that's his major focus now. Is that he needs to become a become a better mage, you know? And it's pretty interesting how like that this super mage like says that like even with heroes untrained and un uh, and unrefined powers, he still has enough to match him. Ooh, sorry, but um, pretty much from that though, it's like the most I can say is that in terms of the dragon mode, like the worries of of hero never changing back, all that's kind of rang on hollow ears because because that's not really something in which that he he can control, and it only happens when of course he's like in dire need or like if he's about about to die. Also, on an interesting side note, some of the guys over there who are with with Sharu Sharu, she act, they actually I believe Nambuko is actually trying to kill her, or use her as a sacrifice. That's pretty interesting. And honestly, but but like the real revelation of this entire episode is that these guys finally at the end of the ep episode just say, "Wait a second, how in the world the world do they know where we are?" Oh, wait a second. Erin comes out out of nowhere. She is the only one with a radio shell. Wait a second. She must have been giving away our um, uh, position because she is the traitor. She's not really a traitor. She was never part of the group group anyway. She was just a girl who tagged along for reasons. That, as she said, she sold information. But as far as I know, it's like um, I don't really think that you really need, need, need to call someone a traitor in order for them to say, well... He has his own surveillance system. He has his own animals and everything. He's gonna know where we're at regardless. So pretty much it doesn't matter what you say or do. Nambuko knows where you are because he kind of has things everywhere like looking at you guys. So, mm. But until then, that is what I gotta say about that. I'll see you next time on the next John Grave Show. Keep watching anime, keep playing video games. I'm out.